Hi, I'm Goose, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about what I call forced lighting. There's a lot of different names, but what it comes down to is we're going to be talking about how to make things look like you have shaders without actually using shaders. I think it's best to just show you an example. We have a block here, and this is vanilla lighting. There's no shaders, and I'm going to turn my shaders on real quick. Now, the shaders simulate real light. All of a sudden, we have a shadow here. Things are lit a lot more realistically. In this case, I'm using a custom setup of complementary unbound, but there are plenty of other shaders that you can choose from that all do similar things. Now I've turned the shaders off and we lost that shadow, but what if we want it to look like that shadow was there without using the shaders at all? Well, that's what I call forced lighting. Now, this isn't something that I came up with by any means. This is something people have been doing for a while, and there are a lot of people that are a lot better at it than I am. So I thought, let's talk to those people. We'll be talking to Sirs, Grayson, and Vahan MC. Each one of them uses different techniques to achieve the results that they're looking for. I'll be taking what they talk about and bringing it back here and breaking it down. To start, I joined Sirs in his plot in the bakery server. Um, I saw a post on Instagram of just a normal house in Tuscany. I think it was, um, it was like a sunset setting and I thought, Damn, that looks good. So <laughs> I tried to do something similar here. Yeah. How do you de decide the colors for the shadow like that, that cyan? Oh, that's that's just um, stylizing. It could be black as well, but I figured because like, um, because the sun kind of with the, with the sunset kind of makes a yellow glow, it would, it would maybe look cool if I went with a more color colorful approach on the, on the shadow as well, so. When you consider light, building with light in Minecraft, um, I think the problem most people have is they focus too much on the light. But um, what you really have to focus on is, is more the shadows. Um, I think that this was my first build for uh, that I tried the lighting effect. And when you go around like from this angle here, around that, it just looks like a normal house. And you wouldn't think that it's uh, that, that it has like special lighting effects or shadow effects. And I didn't really consider the lighting for this side, but what I did consider is um, where the shadow would go. And when I built the shadow, you could kind of... Oh yeah, as soon as you get around that corner. Put... Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of puts emphasis where the sun, emphasis where the sun is hitting. So... Uh, a lot of people talk about doing, like if you're trying to get a good shadow, or uh, not a good shadow, a good light mass in, uh, like in a drawing or in a build or something like that that you really, all you need to do is make the shadow and then the light take care, takes care of itself. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. These are these are the basics of shadow shadow making in Minecraft. When you, when you place a shadow, you, you have to figure out where the where, where the light source is. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because like, for example, you, you would um, stand on this blast block and you would look at this and you are the light source now. You kind of see where, what area is not, or what area is covered by the, by the box. And that's like where the shadow would be. Makes All right, sense, I right? see. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. like for example, for for this one, mm -hmm. I consider the um, the light source to be the sun, like just it being far apart, and the end part isn't white like this, where the light source goes. Okay, okay, I see what you. Yeah, mean. yeah, yeah. I that's understand that's what you mean by that. Yeah, and you you talked about it as well, like the anti anti aliasing. Oh, anti aliasing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So you can use it as well to blend the shadow. And like when you have diagonals, it kind of looks harsh when you just place it like this. So what I do is I just kind of soften it up on the edges. I just I get so excited when I see this because it's it looks so convincingly like a shadow on the side of the building. But then for it to be like fletching tables and gray concrete is just such a wild thing that you just wouldn't think about but it works so well as a as a comparison to each other well, do you do do you do art outside of minecraft or is this no this is all it <laughs> is huh, nice yeah, yeah started with minecraft and it's always only been minecraft that turned out so nice the shadow on this one is just yeah i think shadow wise is my best one yeah i i think so as compared to the other ones i, I would agree that's so good yeah. i actually won first for interior here Oh yeah, this is great. Oh, this is really cool. Nice. 
Oh, and your door with the, the hanging signs to smooth out the diagonals? That's smart. <laughs> yeah, I felt like a nerd when I, when I figured <laughs> it out. <laughs> um, there's a problem because you have to choose the block to be in the corner. And just one on the only one side is supposed to be darker than the other. So okay. you have to kind of find a solution. And what I do is I use either doors, trapdoors, or banners. Okay, that makes sense. Kind of kind of cover up one side, but banners disappear from a distance, so not the best to go for. Oh, and the little the little spigot with the the candles coming out of it. Oh, that's awesome. What's a spigot? Oh, <laughs> and like a uh, like the the hose. Oh, the hose oh yeah, 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 yeah. I guess if you don't know what spigot is, that's kind of that's a. It sounds like a swear word, if I'm being honest. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Sirs brought up a lot of great points in our conversation, but there's one that I want to focus on specifically. In this example, he talked about how the shape of the shadow changes based on where the light source is. For this first pillar, we're imagining that I am the light source standing on this glass block. Because I'm so close to the pillar, this far end of the shadow is going to be larger than this end of the shadow. We're going to hop over into another program called Blender so that I can show you more accurately why this happens. Blender is a wonderful program that you can use for anything from special effects to 3D modeling to 2D animating. In this case, we'll be using it to show an accurate representation of how light interacts with objects. In this scene, we have our walls and our object, and this dot right here is going to be our light source. The closer that the light source is to the object, the bigger the shadow is. This is just because the object is blocking more of the light. As we move further away, the shadow gets smaller. In this instance right here, because the light source is closer to the top of the block than it is to the bottom of the block, the shadow from the top part is going to be larger than the bottom. That's why having the light source close to the object is going to change the shape of the shadow. The top of this pillar is closer to the light source, so the top of the shadow is going to be larger than the bottom. In the next example, he showed how he would do the shadow if the sun was the light source, instead of something closer like a spotlight or a street lamp. In this case, the shadow is consistent from the bottom all the way to the top. As the light source gets farther away from the object, it does get smaller, but only to a point. I've created another light source that is going to be our stand-in for the sun. Because this light source is so much farther away from the object, the shadow cast by the object is going to be consistent all the way throughout. The base is going to be essentially the same width as the top. This is what we're seeing in this example. So this one is lit by the sun, so the shadow is consistent. This one is lit by a light source that's much closer, so the shadow gets a little bit bigger at the top than it does at the base. When your goal is realistic lighting, it's important to think about where your light source is. Is it close, like a street light, or is it far away, like the sun? It's also important to think about the color of your light source. Now, this is a very basic example, but we have different colors for different lights. A normal lantern is going to have warmer light, and a soul lantern is going to have cool light. These choices can have a major impact on how the build looks. Now, they don't look too much different in context except for the colors around the edge, but if we were to put this quartz over with the soul lantern, you can see how much of a difference that color change makes. Next up, we'll be chatting with Grayson, and he's going to show us how to do a lot of this without ever having to place a block by hand. Cool. All right. All right. Well, uh, to start, hi. How's it going? Hi. I'm doing great than you. I'm doing good. Um, so uh, we are, we're gonna be talking about your trees. Um, we're gonna be talking about how you light your trees and you said you use easy edits for all of it. You don't really do it by hand. Now I do easy edits because it's it's just too strong and too good. Um, so for a long time, um, I would use um, the arc angle um, command from Archeon. Um, but uh, recently, the, there has been a new tool for builders, advanced builders, and the tool is so strong and so good uh, that it's making things so much better and so much easier to build. For people who doesn't know, there's a new plugin called Easy Edits. Um, you can choose angles, you can mimic light. Like when I'm building, when I'm shading, I'm trying to imagine a light source. Usually it's the sun, you know, mm -hmm. and then I would try to uh, imagine like where it's lighter and according to where it's lighter, I would maybe shade. It's going to cast some shadows, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to mimic that. Well, this tool does it for you like in one go. 
and it's called easy edit. So now the thing is I need to create a palette. So now my palette is here on the floor. We're going to use the same uh, three blocks. So I'm going to left click and right click on the leaves. And, um, and I'm going to write the command because first you need to, to have like uh, a blocks, a block set as a palette before you do anything with easy edits. So now that I save these three blocks on a palette, I can use that palette to easy texture the whole leaf area. So again, I'm going to retake my selection around my tree and this is going to be insane. Just be prepared to be <laughs> to have your mind blown. I'm just going to look where do I want my light to to look at. Your player needs to look at where like the sun would be facing. So let's say I want to face my sun exactly where my character is and and your orientation, your facing orientation also counts on that. And I'm just going to write easy texture and there's different ways to easy textures. There's like ambient, axis, gradient, and etc. But the one that we want is point light. We're gonna use point light. What that does is it create your character as a light source. And then the second block is your mask. So I'm gonna write oak leaves. The second uh, command is gonna be um, the the palette that you 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 created. So mine is called leaves. And minus F just creates everything nice and easy. I'm going to press enter. It's going to shade and I'll show you the command. In one go and with one command, it created a nice um, shading texture for you in one oh, go. Wow, yeah. Oh, that is simple. I know. And it looks amazing huh. because it, it calculates a light as, a, you know, like that's what I'm trying to achieve by by hand when I would take my time, but texturing like this would take me maybe an hour, two hours, mm -hmm. you know, maybe probably like an hour for that for that tree. You can't go back when you have nice tools like that. You just it's hard to just say no. I'm not gonna use the tool. I'll do it by hand and waste an hour. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. It's really hard to go back. Do you ever do you ever feel like it's become kind of a crutch? Like, do you feel like there are certain things that you're not as good at anymore because they're difficult to do with easy edits or with some of the mods? Or do you feel like it has, as a whole, mm. opened up your possibilities? I mean, I've been playing a bit of like hardcore recently, and I don't feel like I lost any skills building by hand. Mm -hmm. Uh. But I feel like I'm, I became lazy, yeah, <laughs> lazy and creative that like I'm always trying to figure out like how can I make it useful and efficient, you know, but it's, it's also the fact that I build a lot and I, I, I have to make like I make two to three new builds every single week. So I'm trying to uh, be efficient with my time. Do you uh, do you do art outside of Minecraft at all? No. No, is this, no, 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 no. Th this is your only your only artistic outlet. Yes, that's cool. Yeah, it's my but it was a relief. Uh, I always drew a bit on the side, uh, but I've never had there to, a lot of time to do to do art or whatever. I, I always wanted to, but there have a lot of time. And uh, my daughter started playing Minecraft. And then when I started looking at them, I was like, oh, my God, this is this game is so damn good. I, I want to try, you know, huh. And I, I just realized that I had a talent for for uh, colors, uh, build, building, and and I love our, our architecture too. And uh, it became very clear very quickly that it it was it was something that I needed in my life to to express myself um, through art. But I was using Minecraft as a vehicle. That, uh, it was a, a big big relief in my life once I I started building in Minecraft. I feel like it's a very it is Minecraft is becoming a very creative, strong creative outlet. Yeah, it's it's finally which I mean, since the beginning, it's been this way, but it's it is finally getting recognition as an art form, especially with mm -hmm. a lot of things like easy edit and Axiom and, and world edit. And people are like, oh, I can just use this as a medium now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing is I'm a survival friendly builder, so I don't use debug state i want every single one of my builds to be able to be recreated in survival so you never you will never see me use like grass blocks on leaves uh, that's nice. like I, I i would have loved to use like the vines of the drip leaves on this tree i would have loved using uh you know not the moss block but just leaves block and and attach the 
the vines on them. Um, the reason I'm, I do this is because I post on social media and a lot of the Minecraft uh, players are survival players. And if I want to inspire people, well, I also want to include the survival players. Yeah. You know? And it's sad for them. It, it sucks for them to be able to see cool stuff and then they can't do it because it's debugged, you know? If you were to add some blocks in, what kind of blocks, what, what are some more kind of blocks that you would want to see? Or trees or anything? Just for anything, just in, in Minecraft oh, for in general. anything? Mm -hmm. We absolutely, absolutely need navy blue blocks. Yes. A bridge mm -hmm. for blue. We have nothing in blue that's um, i think that's a great answer i always want blue stairs yeah. blue stairs is a big blue stairs me. absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. real blue stairs there really are a ton of different ways that you can get things done in minecraft whether you like to do everything by hand or you want to use commands to make everything a little bit quicker and more efficient it really just depends on your playing style so I'm going to go over the commands again that Grayson showed us so you can see how they work. Now, Easy Edits is a server plugin, and you may be wondering what server I'm on. Well, this is my server. If you join the Discord, I'm going to put a link down below. We do have a creative server and a survival server that our members can play on, and it's really easy to switch between them. Right now I'm in the creative world, but with one command, I can switch over to survival. And another command puts me back in creative. I have to give a huge shout out to our moderators who set this all up for me because I don't have the time nor the knowledge on the back end of stuff to get things like this running. And they have been working tirelessly for a while to make sure that this is all running smooth and it is going fantastic. So thank you guys. So the plugin that Grayson was talking about is called Easy Edits. Uh, we do have that available in the server. So if you log on, it's ready to use, ready to go. Now we have a couple palettes. I have each one of these saved. This one is color. This one is value and this one is leaves. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to get these palettes put up onto different objects with the commands that he showed us. Now, easy palettes is the command and we are getting that palette from the selection that we just made with our ax. And then we're going to name it. We named it leaves. I already have it saved, so I'm not going to do it again, but I will show you how to apply it. We'll start with this sphere right here and we'll do this one with the value. We position ourselves where we want the light coming from and then we type out the command. Point light is the command that is going to make us the light source. Stone is the mask, so this is only going to be affecting the stone in front of us. And then we do a hashtag to choose the palette. In this case, I chose the value palette. When we hit enter, it loads it in real quick. So if you're trying to do something like shade a sphere, this works pretty good, but in reality, the light would work a little bit farther than it does here. So you may have to go in and touch some stuff up by hand, but it really is that easy. We'll do the same thing with this sphere with the color. When we put that in, it's going to light it the same way using the color palette that we chose down here. Now, it is important to note that the order that you select your palette does affect this. I made the yellow my first selection and the blue my last selection so that it ordered it yellow to blue. If I did it the other way around, it would go blue, green, yellow. This command is especially useful when you're doing something like lighting a complex organic object. It's really going to take into account what you can see and then determine that as being hit by the light that is sourced at your character. We'll do this one with the value palette. And it's just that easy. It knows that this is closest, so it's going to put this with the brightest points. And these parts that were covered stay in the shadow, and we get just a little bit of light peeking through on the bottom. This is a great tool for organics, just like tree leaves that Grayson showed us. Sometimes you do need to go in and touch things up by hand. But it only took me 30 seconds to set this up, and that is a lot of time saved. Next up, I'll be talking with Vahan about the cathedral that I showcased in the Curves and Angles video. But first, I have some news. I believe education should be free and accessible to everybody, and I commit to never put any of my educational content behind a paywall. That being said, these videos take time and effort to plan, record, and edit, and it's not an insignificant amount. So I'm starting a Patreon. If you've enjoyed my videos and feel like you've gained something from them, this is a way for you to directly support the channel. I want to be clear, this is a voluntary membership and it is not required. All of my videos will still be available for free here on YouTube, but 100% of your donations will go towards helping me make more, higher quality videos. All patrons will get their name listed at the end of every video, a special role in the Discord, and second tier patrons will get early access to my videos. 
I understand not everyone can or wants to commit to another subscription, so I've set up a Ko-Fi for one-time donations if you would prefer to do that. And if financial support isn't right for you, don't worry, this is all voluntary. Sharing a link or telling a friend about the channel goes a long way. There's a link to the Patreon and the Ko-Fi down in the description, as well as the Discord, and I really mean it when I say that none of this channel would have happened without your support, and I am so grateful for it, so thank you. On to the conversation with Vahan. Her and I talked a lot for a couple hours actually, and we covered a lot of stuff ranging from art and architecture to Minecraft, a whole lot of stuff. So uh, the conversation jumps around a little bit, but we will come back here at the end and I'll break everything down. So see you soon. Um, okay, so something that uh, st stands out uh, that I think you do a lot in this to me is mm -hmm. you have that a very s subtle transitional color between light and shadow. Like in this case, the the purple in between the orange and what is that? Is that mangrove or crimson? Uh, crimson. 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 Um, how do you decide what color to use for that? A trial and error, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trial and error, or it just kind of comes to me. Is that what I'm thinking about a lot? Is like, like, um, like I'm I'm using acacia and purple together because I couldn't really like like if I chose a purple to mat to match with the the purple for the signs and trap doors I'm thinking of more of like the what is it the, the tone like the brightness of it the thing that matches the tone the most I think is the acacia even though it's like orange and purple are very different colors but they're like they read as the same shape from far away Oh, it's a so like, same similar value. Yeah, value. It's crazy how that works. How it's like, oh, there's not purple. It's like, well, I can use orange, and it just it yep. totally works. It works in context. Mm -hmm. So, do you uh, did you have a reference that you're basing a lot of the colors off of, or are you kind of picking your own colors for this one? I had one reference that I followed for the front, and then the rest of it, I've just been like kind of going from there oh yeah okay it's like that yellow yellow white and uh the orange on the on the portals and a little bit of like the the blue and the green and the shadow depending on where the shadow is i kind of I, i've changed it up a little bit so um on the floor the floor shadows are all like tough as tough as like that greenish gray and um and then on the like very dark shadows it's the light blue terracotta and for it, you see like these all all the flying buttresses the shadows that those are casting on the wall i felt like since that's one big white wall there'd be like a lot of light bouncing around in there so i'm, I'm shading it with clay which is just like it's much brighter and it's less contrasty. I feel like doing really dark shadows there would also like interfere with the window shapes and make them less clear. So how often do you find yourself, um, like for example, up here on like the shadow on the roof, mm -hmm. um, what are these? Okay. So you have warped door and the iron doors. How okay. often do you find that you're like, okay, I don't really have the block that I need for this. So I need to rethink the color palette as a whole. Since it's in shadow, a lot of it's going to be blending together, so I'm not really thinking too hard about, like, I need a super rigid palette here. I just need it to work good enough, good enough colors. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, because I mean, I'm using trap doors and signs and walls, uh, stairs, fence gates. You're not going to get a single material that has, like, all the exact same color. So I just got to kind of mix and match and see what works. If you could add a block, what block would you add? Probably just dark blue. Yeah, yeah. just more dark blue. Yeah, you know, like cobalt or something. That, like make a, make a whole material set, kind of like how copper and iron and stuff have material sets. You could just do some sort of blue... I think one of the important things with this build is like I've gotten the question probably like a hundred times at this point. It's like, oh my god, what command are you using to do that? 
<laughs> it's all by hand. It's <laughs> there is a command that does this, which is why people think it's done with commands. It's called slash slash shadow. So the the issue with with slash slash shadow though is like that's a finite point, so you're gonna get the shadow distortion because uh, I'm treating it as if the sun is infinitely far away at a 45 degree angle. You know, one of my favorite things about this is, is it's, uh, have you seen any of Monet's paintings in person? No, I haven't. They're my, maybe more so as some other artists, but definitely with Monet too. When you like Rembrandt's a, a really good example too. When you look at it up close, it's just a mess. Like you're like, if you just get a little <laughs> spot and kind of blow it up, it's like, wh what am I looking at? This is absolutely nothing. Kind of like looking at your spires with like the buttons and fences and levers and trip wires. And oh, it's the, like, sc the, the, the uh, skulk shriekers. <laughs> yeah. And like the shriekers in there. And it's just, when you're up close, it's just, just like, what am I looking at? But as soon as you take a step back, it just all falls into place so well. Yeah. That's, that's the mindset to take for, for gothic and big structures you're never gonna see any of this up close because like like your your viewpoint is from down down on the ground so the only things that need to look good up close are the things on the ground it's still mm -hmm. some of it's kind of scuffed and bad it is it's hard to it's hard to take that step back in a um, yeah. uh, painting i was always taught to work general to specific one of the my instructors one time the way he was a uh, giving a, a lecture on portrait painting um, and he would describe it as you have to earn the fingernails. He's like, don't worry about putting the fingernails in and making the shape right and like shading the fingernails if the proportions of the hand are wrong. You know, like make sure that the, the bones of all of this are good because that's what people are going to be looking at. They're not going to be looking at if you did the line on the fingernails right, they're going to be like, oh, is the hand the right shape is the light falling on the arm in the right way mm -hmm. um, and those are the important things the rest the mind just kind of fills in on its own yeah that build always blows my mind i've seen it so many times and every time i go and take some time and look at it, it there's just something else that i'm just like wow what like oh great build there are a couple big points that we touched on that i do want to talk about a little bit more uh, the first one is how she used the purper to transition between crimson and red sandstone and why that choice works so well even though when it's on a small scale like it is behind me it really looks like a very odd choice now the first thing that she mentioned was that she needs to be able to use things like signs and stairs and fence gates fences all of that stuff so she uses acacia because it works with the red sandstone and she doesn't have access to all of those blocks with red sandstone now the purper is a similar value to both of these blocks it is a little bit higher in value, but I'll explain why that's actually a good thing in a second. But using this as a transition between these two works because this value is similar to the value of these. So even though the color is off, the eye is focusing on the value of the blocks, not necessarily the color. But the purper is still close enough to the crimson that it blends in. Now, there is a reason that the purper being a higher value than the crimson and the sandstone actually works pretty well. When we see bright lights next to dark shadows in nature and in traditional art, the lightest point is often closest to the darkest shadow. This is because the contrast between the dark shadow and the light will make this area look brighter than the rest of it. This effect is pulled off quite well by using purper to transition between these two colors. It really makes it look like that is light being cast right here and not just a sudden shift of color. The other thing that Vahan mentioned that I thought was really smart was to use different blocks to shade where the shadows of the flying buttresses are versus the rest of it. Now, she mentions that this is because she imagined that there would be a lot of light bouncing around in this area, and this is true. There are more surfaces to be reflecting that light. It's reflecting off the windows, off of the side of the flying buttresses, off of the wall behind it, and this is going to make those shadows appear a little bit lighter than the rest of the shadows. Because of this, she uses clay for the shadows instead of the light blue terracotta. They're very similar in hue, it has that purple and that blue in there, but this one is a higher value while still maintaining the same effect. It's not immediately apparent that this shadow is different than the other shadows. It works in context to create a very convincing lighting effect. 
The last thing I really wanted to emphasize is working general to specific, like we were talking about at the end of the clip. Understanding that you may not need to go into the fine detail on every part of your build because it's the general look of the build that is going to have the effect. This is also important to avoid burning out on a build. If you start a build and you immediately start going for the details, it can be very overwhelming. Working on the general shape, color, and silhouette of the build before you move into the details can help you work faster, and it can sometimes help you catch errors before you get too deep into a project. Another way to think about it is it can be easier to fix something that's partially done rather than start the entire thing over once you're almost finished. If you really enjoyed that build by Vahan, she actually has a copy of it in one of the plots in the creative world. You can check that out on my Discord, link is down below. And Sirs and Grayson are both active members in the bakery, which is also a public server. I want to say a huge thank you to all three of them for taking the time to talk to me and teach me how they do these things. Also, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something new. I'll be back later with another video. Make sure you check the links in the description, and I hope you have a nice day. See ya. Oh wait, okay, one more thing. I posted about my Patreon on my Discord while I was recording this, and I have three members. So thank you guys, you three are awesome. You're the first three members, and you three have made this video a little more possible. So I appreciate it. I will see you guys next time with maybe a bigger list. We'll see. Uh, I love you guys, have a nice day. Later.